It's just a great par five to keep a good drive here, turn a little bit right to left so it can follow that coast. And on a day like today, we can get there in two. Lessons from the Pros, presented by the Ace Group. This is probably one of my favorite views on the entire golf course. It's just, uh, you can't get distracted by looking at that. Side of four U.S. Open Championships and the AT&T National Pro-Am. Not only invites you to eavesdrop on a practice round with PGA Tour Pro Matt Gogol, but it also allows you to enjoy the tips and thoughts on course strategy in the majestic place that provided him with professional redemption. You may remember the 2000 AT&T. Gogol held a big lead as he made the turn down the home stretch of the tournament. But the then PGA Tour rookie proceeded to cart a back 940. Meanwhile, Tiger Woods astounded the crowds with his shot making skills and an eagle birdie, par birdie finish. Woods went on to steal the title. Two years later, Gogol exercised the demons with a glorious, dramatic, come-from-behind victory at the same event. The former All-American at Kansas isn't in Kansas anymore. Welcome to Pebble Beach Golf Links and playing lessons from the pros. When I'm looking at this hole right here, probably the hardest uh, place to be on this screen because left's not good. You got left to right win, and uh, short's not, not good either. So. Basically, here's what I was talking about. Center of the green, you two putt from the right side, and you kind of get away. You try to attack this flag, and you can make a bogey real quick. So, you know, again, this is a kind of a typical pebble hole in that green's not very big, but if you hit a quality iron shot, you got to, you, you know, even the center of the green, you don't have very long of a putt. I've got a six iron, we're figuring about 183 yards or so. But I got to hold it in the wind, so I got to draw this. The wind's left to right. Middle of the green, right? Yeah. So that's a that's a very good shot on this hole. Great from anybody else, but I'll take it 25 feet right out of that hole, putting back up to it any time. So characteristic of the uh, and uh, a lot of guys get frustrated because it tends to be a little. But what I try to do is just always make a really good stroke, and I think more than anything at Pebble, you have to play the ocean effect. And so here's a great example. Uh, the reason why I wanted to be right of the hole, not mess with trying to drop it over this bunker or mess with left, is that everything's screaming straight towards the ocean. So I have, other than you know trying to get the right speed, a very makeable putt because I'm just going uphill the whole way. So you know, when you're 20 feet, 15 feet out here on these greens, I think it's more or less just the good roll, trying to drop, die the ball right at the cup and playing a little bit of the ocean effect. That was not dying at the hole. Cardinal Sin, too, running about four feet by out here. I mean, you know, that was a that was a mental mistake trying to run that putt that hard at the hole. But you know, you're going to have to be faced with these. And I think the main thing on Poana Greens, you just got to stay very, very, very still and just again have this ball dying at the hole. Um, a lot of guys try to jam them in. I think that shrinks the size of the hole. I think if you die it in, it gives you a little bit bigger hole. So. I'm going to go back down the ocean. It should be swinging a little to the left. It was a good stroke there. So, you know, I made a mistake coming by, but I didn't hurt myself. I got my par. Uh, you know, let's task one. Go to 10. Got to 10. I think the hole, obviously, on 10 is, is really set up by the drive. So this is probably one of my favorite views on the entire golf course. It's just uh, you can't get distracted by looking at that. You know, I mean, I, if your eye starts looking at this beautiful ocean out here, you take your mind away from trying to put it in the fairway. But it's as nine is not, I think, a, 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 certainly does. I, the bunker out there on the left is generally where guys make their mistakes. To me, it's it's the most difficult driving hole in the course for me because I draw the ball, and I don't want to start something down the ocean side because if it doesn't draw, 
you know, I'm going to make a big number. So you have to try to hit a little bit of a fade. I'm going to try to do that here, and I'll, I'll kind of split the middle of that bunker and let the wind just ride everything out, and that way my mistake's out left, and a good shot comes down and follows the fairway line and gets in the middle. So here, trying to hit a fade versus normally hitting a draw, I'm just going to take the club just a little bit more on the outside plane and just accelerate down through it, cut, put a little cut spin on it. That wind will help too. Should have been should have perfect to hit it, you know, a little slide and cut right off that bunker. This is like I said, this is the most difficult driving hole for me just because I primarily hit a right to left shot and I can't take it down that ocean line. So I have to hit a shot that I'm not accustomed to and that's a fade. You know, obviously what helps shape a ball is the spin you put on it. And uh, you see higher handicaps uh, golfers hit this big curving uh, slice and that's because they come over the top of it and they cut down through it. So, you know, in a very small uh, way I'm trying to create that with, if I'm hitting a normal draw. A normal draw is that I'm swinging kind of from the inside path and releasing through the ball, which puts in that little curving spin like a bowler would do. You know, if a, you see a ball, a bowling ball come down a lane, it's, it's spinning to the left, you know, primarily. So what I'm trying to do is create that shot to go the other direction. And what I have to do then is I have to manipulate the club face at impact to slide across, put side spin on it. Uh, they gave us a, a nice pin to, to access today, but big thing I have to guard against is how much this ball be is below my feet and what you'll see out here at Pebble a lot is very very uncommon that you'll ever have a flat lie so a normal shot if I was normally going to play this shot this is about where the ball would be positioned this is level with me okay from my feet that ball is about four inches maybe five inches above or below the gr below my feet so again this is going to create a shot that wants to go out right so I have to be very very careful with my legs and, and how I'm coming down at impact. I got to be very, very still. The slightest amount of movement this way leaves that face open. I can't get back to square. I'm going to slide to the ocean. So this is a great hole in the sense that you really always have the ball below your feet with the wind pushing it towards the ocean. So I'm just going to stay real quiet. Again, middle of the green or just to the right of the flag, I'm with, left with an uphill pot. So I'm going to have to try to hold it on that flag and draw it and keep my legs very still at impact. Not the greatest of shots, but it's a difficult one with the ball that far below your feet. You know, the mistake is not to overcompensate and put it in that left bunker where you can't get it up and down because it's so downhill towards the green, towards the ocean. At this point, my ball's, you know, 35 feet, not a great shot, but I'm putting straight up the hill. Coming up, more tee ball secrets and later short game shots you need to score. Playing lessons from the pros, brought to you by the Ace Group, a leader in global insurance and reinsurance. Tour pros don't get lost in their mechanics on the golf course. They're more concerned with the situation at hand. Maybe the shape of the hole, the pin location, the lie, or the wind for that matter. They leave their technical thoughts on the practice area. As your playing lesson continues, we pick up Matt Gogol at the 11th hole at gorgeous Pebble Beach. That should be perfect there. Leave me a nice angle into the flag, and I'll show you when we get up there that this green sits kind of at you at an angle, and you kind of want to approach it from the left side. Anything down the left center of the fairway gives you the best angle in. So if you've uh, been in Carmel the night before and had a nice bottle of wine, this whole, this whole walking up this hill here is a beater. But the reward is once you get up here, I always look back and look at that view because you stand right up on top of the, the ocean. It is... Uh, a priceless view right there. I, I, you just you feel like you're right on above it and looking across. It's just a great panoramic shot. Then you turn your focus back on hitting this little shot below the hole. Got a nine iron here, and obviously you want to be below the hole, but it's so uphill again into the wind. I always take about an extra club here and just kind of hit it down underneath the wind. 115. I'm hitting a nine iron. That's usually my 140 yard club. So just kind of hitting a little punch shot.
almost not enough. It ended up on the left front of the green, but that wind it just kills the ball on this hole. My normal routine when I'm putting is to always look at it from the back side of the hole. Sometimes I'll pick up something that I don't see down there, like how much this hill off this bunker will influence this putt. It'll stop wanting to go right and it'll hold up and be straight. So I see that. Also, I can gauge really when I stand about here how much I'm really up the hill. And this is my key influence at the latter part of the putt. So this is what's going to affect, you know, the last two or three feet. So I'm going to use that as my guide that it's going to hold the putt up. And then it's just getting the correct speed. I'm going to look at this as pretty straight. Uh, two practice strokes usually, maybe one or two. And I'm just thinking now speed. I've got the line established. Look at that. That, hole, that hill right there almost held it up so much it stayed out to the left, but I got lucky, you know, and that's, that's part of it out here is just getting that ball to fall in at the right, you know, at the right last turn, I guess. You know, a buddy of mine, Jay Williamson, says what I do so well is that I continue to club down the line. And, and down the line meaning I accelerate and extend down the path. So many people think you hit the golf ball. And, and I don't think that the, the swing stops there. You, you swing at the golf ball. You don't just hit it. And, and you have to, the swing is not just taking it back and stopping at impact. It's accelerating down that line. I'm kind of one of those guys that I'm not the most accurate driver and I'm not the longest driver, so I'm kind of in the middle categories of both. So I really have to be disciplined and not trying to kill it, but trying to uh, to uh, just put a good swing on it, put it in the middle of the fairway. And, you know, that's a good example right there. That's about as far as I can hit it because of my tempo was nice. Okay, now we're kind of working back away from the ocean and you're getting the slope where the ball is above your feet now versus like at 9 and 10 where it was uh, much more below your feet. Here's an example. If this ball was, I laid this club down, that's about parallel. So it's four or five inches above my, uh, above my feet. So thus it's going to try to shut the face and, and hook. And I usually don't try to ever fight the hill or fight going against the shot. In other words, I've got a right to left wind. I've got a right to left, you know, hill shot or a shape shot. And I don't try to cut it that much and try to hold it. I, I don't try to work against the elements. I try to work with it. So I'm just going to allow myself a little bit more room. There's two palm trees out there. I'm going to aim at the one on the right to start it, knowing that the hill will shape my ball to the left, knowing that the wind will shape it, and I'm just going to have to get lucky on the spin and how far it releases over to the hole. My yardage again is 117. So it's not a full wedge. It's just a controlled wedge. It'll bounce and start moving left. too much spin there I think it was the right idea it just kind of you got to get lucky on that on how much it will release to the left so I've got again an uphill shot you know I can't argue with having an uphill shot for birdie I'm gonna treat this just like a putt it's sitting to where I really can't get my putter into it as clean as I would like and if I use a chip I could hit into this and stuff and it could spin and, and come up short so I will treat this just like a putt I'll line it up just as a putt I'll, I 99% of the time I leave the flag in and I'm going again up away from the ocean so it's up this hill maybe a little bit of breakdown to the to the bottom of the green but I'll approach this like a putt there's two ways to play this shot some guys like to stand far away and sweep it and some guys like to be more up on top of it and putt it like a putting stroke. I use my putting grip here. So that's what I like to do. I like to stand a little bit closer, use it like a putt. And again, I'm just trying to get the correct speed. I'm thinking this is basically my putting stroke. I want the ball dying at the hole. I'm a little uphill, but I'm just going to kind of sweep through it, pick out my line.
and other than, you know, a foot right in the heart. So speed's fine. I got a, a tap in for a par. The back nine par fives at Pebble Beach and how tour winner Matt Gogol approaches them as your playing lesson continues. The playing lessons from the pros course management tip is presented by the Ace Group, a leader in global insurance and reinsurance. At least a birdie hardly ever satisfied with par. Pebble Beach Golf Links, designed by Jack Neville and Douglas Grant in 1919 on a breathtaking stretch of land, has four par fives that test you every step of the way. Matt Gogol, a six-time nationwide tour winner, is your guide. Okay, on this layup shot, I think, uh, you know, you got to get a yard that you feel comfortable with because the third shot, you have to be extremely precise. You're going to still go uphill on the third shot and uh, you're going to be into the wind. So I just take something, and again, I don't, like my normal shot here is a, my normal shot is a right to left shot, but this hill slants too much to the right to left that I actually have to go back and do what I did like on number 10, and that is put a little bit of a cut spin on it. Ball a little bit above my feet, so I got to make sure I really accelerate through it to cut it. I should have about 105 or 110 in from there. I'm just going to hit a little controlled wedge, try to keep it under the wind and just drive it through there. It's 104, it's probably going to play, you know, 110 or so. That's long. Well, that wind really laid down, you know. The hill's working for me. It's going to help me get that ball up in the air a little bit. But again, I leave the club face open, a lot more open than most people, and I just try to swing with the hill and slide it up. I'm going to try to drop this about right where that shadow of the flag is right now. And so I'm going to try to drop it about two or three feet on the green. And then I'll just try to accelerate through it. So. That is a good shot. Inside two or three feet, really a no-brainer. Can escape by making a, a par. This is a great hole. There's just It's almost two different greens. In fact, it really is two different greens. You get that front right, it's kind of in an hourglass, and when that pin's where it is today, the left part of it, it uh, you, you better hit a good solid shot, and, and the front bunker is not a bad play. Long here is uh, no good. So I'm thinking of a club that just carries the, the front lip of that bunker by about five paces and no more. We're very fortunate to play this on tour and I try to get out here as much as I can because it's just, how do you describe this to someone? You gotta come out here and smell the air and you know, you just can't look at it on a picture and appreciate it. When I take these practice swings, we're trying to figure out how thick the grass is and how much it's restricting the club, the club head. So I've got a little bit of sticky grass, a little more than what's normally on this course. So I've got to be a little more aggressive through the impact. At the same time, just trying to drop it on the edge of the green here. Got away from me a little bit, but. Playing lessons from the pros, brought to you by the Ace Group, a leader in global insurance and reinsurance. Look at it, ocean down the left side. It's just a great par five. It really is a great finishing hole. So, again, not to get distracted by all the beauty, you got to focus on task at hand, which is to keep a good drive here, turn a little bit right to left so it can follow that coast, and on a day like today, we can get there in two. I've got my name on my bag, so I wouldn't advise taking it down the coastline, and I now have a two iron into this par five, and again, we're blessed with perfect weather today. But uh, I play this hole where it's driver, three wood, little seven iron. So it just depends.
Well, we've got a putt at it. This is kind of like a chess match. This, this golf course, you really got to constantly be thinking where you want to put that ball. When you get a day like today, you know, you're not as challenged by the elements. You can just be a little more aggressive with some shots, but again, your, your thought has to be right. And there's a putt that is usually a lot quicker than you think. It's going down grain, it's going right towards the ocean, so it's got a little, little movement right to left. I don't think I've ever eagled this hole. Oh, good speed. I think he's got the 18th hole down pat. What do you think? Matt Gogol not only gave you a tour of one of the most beautiful courses in all of golf, he also showed you how to play it effectively. We learned how to putt on the Poana, how to choose the right shot, and he gave us a short game clinic we'll never forget. Thanks to you, Matt Gogol, for our playing lesson, and thanks to you at home for watching. Until next time, I'm Kelly Tillman. I'd rather do that than be making my... So, did anybody catch that? <laughs> yeah, you know, I made yeah, my yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Here, you know? here, here, here. <laughs> I mean, so you never let up. No, well, I mean, you just, you never know when you're going to hit one shot. A friend of mine always said you're always one shot away from turning it around. So that right there is, uh, you know, a lot of luck, but, yeah, you know, never give up. Tuesday on the golf.